So great whites are designed to protect their all-important senses from injury. None more so than their eyes. But what exactly does the great white see? At Florida Atlantic University, this tiny lemon shark and this odd-shaped bonnet head may reveal the answer. Mickey, when you bring it in, flip it upside down for a second. Dr. Steve Kajura and grad student Mickey McComb are preparing a high-tech experiment to discover a shark's field of view. We're ready to flip. First, they place the lemon shark in an anesthetic bath, putting it to sleep. A tiny hose keeps water flowing over the gills. Injecting a blue dye confirms the shark is breathing. What we found so far is that sharks really do have a pretty good sense of vision. And in fact, they have excellent low light vision. In terms of uh, comparing to other fishes, I think sharks are uh, you know, definitely comparable, if not uh, superior to, uh, to many of the, uh, the other fishes. That looks good. That looks really good. Yeah. Great whites are far too big for this kind of research. Scientists use smaller sharks and estimate the results for a giant great white. I think we're ready. To measure what sharks see, the scientists place a wire on the cornea, recording the electrical impulses fired by photoreceptors back to the brain. Three, two, one. Go. And you can see the light turned on, sharp response by the photoreceptors, gradual increase over time, and there, and that's you can see where the light turned off, and now the photoreceptors are dropping back down to their non excited state. Okay, good, good. The light response. moves around the eye, taking dozens of measurements, Perfect. building a 3D map of this shark's field of vision. But to predict what a great white can see, the team needs the bonnet head. By collecting data on this shark's spread apart eyes and comparing it to the closer set eyes of the lemon shark, the team can estimate what the tightly set eyes of a great white actually see. The results show lemon sharks view the world in two almost completely independent spheres. They can't see the world in front of their nose. The wide-eyed bonnet head actually has better straight-ahead vision than the lemon. But the great white can truly see the world in front of it. They have binocular vision like human beings, meaning they have excellent depth perception and are superior hunters. So great whites are uniquely equipped to be one of the ocean's ultimate predators. Their keen vision electrosensory perception, highly evolved jaws, and serrated teeth are a devastating combination. During Paul's harrowing encounter, the smell of freshly caught fish and human blood swirled around the kayak. We know these are powerful attractants for a great white. And in Florida, Dr. Steve Kajura and student Trisha Meredith want to determine which smell is the most irresistible to a shark. They anesthetize this lemon shark. A glass tube will deliver different smells into her nose. Okay, so we've got all of our smells lined up here. Allowing scientists to measure the strongest response. The first trial is with squid a regular meal of this lemon shark. Squid juice, we have a piece of squid and some water, um, and there's juices in the water now. Now, we usually feed them squid pretty regularly, a few times a week, so this should be pretty stimulatory for the shark. Let me know when you're ready to go here. Ready? And trip. And, oh yeah, look at that. Good, strong response from the squid. The magnitude of the response is, is great, so there's clearly a strong response to the squid odor. This time we have a piece of shrimp in the water and its um, juices are swirling around in there, so we're going to take a little sample of that. Okay? Okay. Cool. Oh, look at that. Wow. It's another good, strong magnitude response. The lemon shark clearly responds to the scent of prey. Okay, you can 
can see the baseline and then coming up to the nice but what about human blood now we're going to try and see how the shark responds to human blood so we've taken a little bit of blood and mixed it in with some seawater we'll see how that goes okay i'm injecting okay and go Oh, look at that. That's a pretty good response. It's not it's, huge, but it's, it's something. It's not huge. See here, it's clearly dropping. It's taking a long time to come back up to baseline here. The results of the blood test are surprising. This shark is clearly more interested in marine life than human blood. It's always been suggested that sharks are these, these bloodthirsty predators out there to detect a single drop of human blood in a large Olympic-sized pool, for instance. But it turns out that, you know what, maybe they're really not quite that sensitive after all. Uh, we just saw that for the human blood example, it just did not elicit nearly as strong a response as we saw for something like their natural prey items. So Paul's blood probably didn't compel the great white to stick around. The smell of fresh snapper may have been the stronger lure.